church, we just want to welcome you to our Wednesday online service. Um, if you could just, wherever you're at, stand to your feet and help us worship this evening. Sing a new song I shout it out louder than before Let the whole earth sing The whole earth sing Oh continue in an attitude of worship, I just want to lead us in a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, even though, Lord, we're not together, Father God, we know, Lord, that we're in unity, Lord, and I just pray, Father, for your people, Lord, wherever they're at, Lord, that you would just help them, Father, to release their minds and their hearts to you, Father, from this busy week, Father. Lord, I just pray that we would just come into an attitude of worship to you, Father God, that this would be our love to you, Lord, to just give our hearts and our minds to you right now, Father God, and surrender, Lord, because you came, Father God, and you rescued us, Lord, from the pit, Father, and we thank you in the name of Jesus.
Thank you, Platform, this evening. Again, we want to welcome you to our Wednesday night service. For those who are at home watching online, uh, we want to welcome you this evening. You know, tonight we're going to continue with our service. One thing that we want to do is that we want to continue in this attitude of worship and praise unto the Lord, and we want to lift up our needs before God. Amen. You know, the Word of God tells us to ask, amen, to knock on the door, and as we knock and we ask, the Bible says then we shall receive. And I believe that this evening we all have different needs in our lives, whatever they may be. And tonight we want to believe God with you. Maybe you're at home, you're feeling sick. So tonight I want you to do something. I want you to place your hand on yourself. If you're feeling with the flu a cold or even COVID, whatever it may be, we want to believe God with you, that God's going to bring healing to you and that God's going to bring uh, strength to your body tonight. Amen. And um, we want to believe God for all those people that are sick in body uh, tonight. We want to especially lift up those that have uh, contracted the virus, uh, uh, the coronavirus, that God would just bring healing to their bodies. And we want to lift up all those loved ones, maybe they find themselves in the hospital, that God would just bring, uh, do a miracle in their bodies. <coughs> Excuse me. And so tonight, we're going to go before God. And if you're at home, you're feeling sick, we're going we're gonna to believe God for an amazing miracle in your body. Uh, tonight, we also want to lift up uh, Sister Katrina Hill, that God will just bring healing to her. And um, so right now, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence and before your throne right now. And God Almighty, <coughs> excuse me, we, we pray that you, my God, would have your way. Right now, I pray that you would touch your people, touch their bodies in the name of Jesus. We pray for those that find themselves sick, my God, that you will restore their health in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray right now we rebuke all viruses, infections, sickness, and infirmities, God. We rebuke them in the mighty name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. Heavenly Father, right now we ask that you would help your people tonight, God. I pray for your healing in the name of Jesus. You are our creator and you're also our healer. God, in the name of Jesus, we ask for your healing. And we thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Uh, we're we're going to believe God with you for healing in your body. Um, you can send us... Uh, a text you can send us an email let us know how we can pray for you or even there on facebook you can send us a message um just have a couple of announcements uh this sunday we do have our in-person service um at 11 a.m we have a special christmas service we have our our toy giveaway so if you know any families that may be in some need in their lives and uh, they have children. We want to bless their children. We're going to be giving out toys for those ages 3 
to 12. So bring a friend, a, a neighbor, uh, someone that you know, a relative, so that way we can bless them and show them God's love. Amen. And that's going to be this Sunday at 11 o'clock uh, and 10 o'clock for prayer. Uh, also next Wednesday, we will be online only again. And so that is all this evening's announcements. Tonight, we're going to move on with our service. And I want to preach a message tonight in regards to peace, peace on earth. And, um, and it's something that we need right now more than ever. We need the peace of God. And so tonight, I just pray that God would minister to our lives as we look at the Word of God this evening. Amen. Peace on earth. Amen. Um, you know, we are living in a, in a world that's upside down. You know, things um, are not very peaceful sometimes. We, we see that all that's taking place in the world today. Um, we see that we hear all these negative news all the time. On the news, it's always negative and negative and negative. And sometimes we don't want to even turn on the television anymore. Why? Because of, of the news that we hear. But, you know, this evening, we're going to look at the Word of God. And the Word of God says that when Jesus was born, he, there was peace on earth. He came to bring peace. And not as the world gives it, but as God gives it. Amen. And we know that Jesus himself is peace. So look, the Word of God tells us in the Gospel of Luke... Chapter 2, verses 12 to 14, this is what the Bible says. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Let's go ahead and pray tonight in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We ask that you are, your name would be lifted up. And I pray for all those that might find themselves in turmoil, in confusion. My God, that you, my God, will bring peace to their lives, my God. That you will bring comfort and strength, my God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You know, so tonight, I want to bring up, I want to speak about the peace that God wants to give us in our lives. Amen. Yes, we are living in a world that's upside down. We're living in a world, the times that we're living in today, there's a lot of turmoil, there's confusion, and there is a lack of peace. But I'm here to tell you that you and I can find the peace of God even in those times. Even in the times that we live in today, we can find the peace of God. So if you find yourself today... Lacking peace. You may be saved or unsaved. Amen. And there might be some times in, in our lives that we may find ourselves struggling. And I'm here to tell you that we can find peace and joy at all times. Even in those times that may, not, they may be difficult and struggling times. Amen. We can find joy and we can experience the joy of God, and we can experience the peace of God, even in those times they may be confusing, and, uh, or the world may seem that it's upside down. Our struggles that we face in life, sometimes they can be uh, related to the decisions and actions that we make. That happens a lot. We see that happens. Uh, there's a lot of turmoil sometimes that, that we bring up on ourselves, because of decisions and uh, actions of our own personal lives. And then there's those struggles that we face in life that they just come. There's just part of our lives that had nothing to do with our choices or our, our decisions. They just come. Sometimes we find ourselves uh, uh, struggling in life, or maybe sick or, or financially uh, hardships or, or whatever the case may be. There's going to be times in our lives that we may find struggles that, um, that had nothing to do with our actions. And so tonight, that's what I want to speak about. I want to speak about that we can find peace on earth. We can find peace on earth because of Christ. 
In this passage of Scripture, it's an amazing passage of Scripture because here the Bible is speaking about the shepherds and how the shepherds were out in the field tending their sheep. And here the angel of God appears unto the shepherds and tells them about this great news that Jesus, the Son of God, was to be born. And here <coughs> the Word of God speaks about how there will be peace on earth. Amen. That's exactly what the Word of God says here. That Jesus is peace Himself. When we have God within our lives, we have the peace of God. Amen. And how can we experience uh, peace on this earth? Amen. How can we experience the joy of God in our lives? Amen. Even in those times they may be struggling. Even in those times they may be difficult. And so I want to look at just three things that I believe are very necessary for us, amen, that, we, that will help us in experiencing peace even in those difficult times in our lives. First of all, we need the love of God. The love of God. In the book of Romans, chapter 5, in verse 8, the Bible says, But God demonstrates... His own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. The Bible is saying here that even when we lived in our sin, Jesus loved us. Amen. He loved us so much that He gave His life for us. Amen. So it shows us, amen, if we're going to experience the love of God, we're going to experience the joy of God, one thing that we have to first realize is that God loves you, amen. And I believe that we've heard this so many times. God loves you, amen. God is not against you, but God is for you. Sometimes when we are, feeling, when we are going through those hard times in life, we may feel that God is nowhere to be found. We may feel may, many times that, uh, uh, that uh, God is not for us. But that's when the devil comes into our lives and begins to lie to us. Amen. We have to understand that the love of God is real. That God's love, that we can't even explain it, how it works. Amen. And so uh, God is a good God. He loves you and I. And, uh, and at the times in our lives that you might find yourself sick, you might find yourself broke, you might find yourself struggling in life, you may be questioning the love of God. But no, I'm here to say to you this, this evening that God loves you so much. Amen. Sometimes we may be experiencing difficult times. We may be experiencing troubling times within our own personal lives or even our family. I'm here to tell you that, that God loves you. God cares about you. What's going to help us overcome it during those times is the love of God. <coughs> there, are, there are times in our lives, amen, that, God, uh, that we may not feel uh, uh, the love of God. We have to understand something about God. That nothing can separate us from His love. There is no one that can separate us from His love. There is nothing that can separate us from His love. God is good and He loves you. Even when you're sick, when you're uh, broke, and all whatever times that we're facing in our lives, God's love is real. Amen. God's love is real. Um, God is not like you and I. There's, you know, there's people today, um, uh, we, our love goes up and down, all around. It's not uh, stable. God is not like that. God's love is continuous. It's not broken. God is good all the time. <clears throat> His love is real all the time. It doesn't matter what's taking place around us. The love of God will always be there. Um, nothing in this world, or nothing, or nothing or no one, can separate us from the love of God. Amen. So what helps us when we are experiencing those hardships in our lives? You know, there's today, there's people that uh, are experiencing hardships. 
uh, during this uh, pandemic all over the world. Uh, there's people that have lost their jobs, others their health, uh, others uh, there's depression, others are facing all kinds of different uh, challenges in their lives. But even in those times, we have to understand that the love of God does not change. His love for us does not change. What's going to help us? What's going to help us in those times that are so challenging, difficult times? What helps us to know that God's love is real? That God's love never changes? That God is not like you and I? Our, our, our emotions are up and down and all around, but God's emotions is not like that. His love is constant. It's never broken. And so re regardless of <coughs> where you find yourself, God loves you. God cares about you. And God wants to help you. And God is good regardless of what is going on around us. The love of God is constant, and it's real. And so this, this evening, how can we find peace on earth when we realize that God loves you? Doesn't matter what anybody else says. God cares about you, and God loves you. Second of all, another thing that is going to be important for us to understand, to, uh, um, to realize the peace of God in our lives is to understand that God is faithful. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, in verse 13, the Bible says, If we are faithless, He remains faithful, for He cannot deny Himself. Amen. He cannot deny Himself. God is faithful to us. His word would not fail. What, what gives us peace on this earth? What gives us uh, joy? What gives us hope is to know that God, we serve a God that is faithful. That his word will not fail. You know, um, I, I believe that when we face those times in our lives, when we are uh, facing difficult situations, because we're all going to face them, uh, it's part of life, amen, we're, whether it's in this pandemic or outside this pandemic, um, we're all going to face uh, uh, struggling times. We know that. That's part of life, amen. God never promised us a life that was without any challenges or struggles. No, there's a, that's going to be part of our lives. So, uh, what helps us to have hope and peace in this world? To know that we serve a faithful God. Amen. What helps us in those times that are struggling? What helps us to overcome and to find peace uh, in this world when everybody else may be find, might be depressed and confused? What helps us? What helps us is to know that we serve a God of love and to, and to know that we serve a God that is faithful. He is faithful to His Word. Look at what the Word of God says. There, we're going to be, even if we are faithless, He remains faithful. There's going to be times, in, there's been times in my life that my faith has weakened. There's been times in my life that I have lacked faith. But even in those times, God has remained faithful. We serve an amazing God. We serve a God that He is faithful to His word. He will, re <coughs> excuse me. He will remain faithful. The, the struggles of life. Listen to this very careful. Uh, the struggles of life do not cancel out His faithfulness. I'm going to say that again. The struggles of life do not cancel out His faithfulness. In other words, just because, just because we go through hardships, it does not mean He's not faithful. 
Just because we face issues and struggles in life, it does not mean that God is not faithful. No, God will always, always be faithful to his word. God cannot deny himself. That's what the word of God says here. God, you know, uh, God will uh, make, will <coughs> bring help in, at all times. Amen. You know, I believe that today as as believers, one of the hard things for us to, to, uh, to do is to understand his faithfulness when we're in the middle of that, the struggle. When we're in the middle of the struggle, our faith is weakened many times. We begin to doubt. We begin to uh, 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 pull back sometimes. But realize this, that God he is faithful. He will not fail you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. God will not leave us. He will not forsake us. God is a faithful God. Then uh, I have realized some things in my life. I have learned, one of the things that I have learned, in those days where my faith has weakened, God has remained faithful. Realize this, that in the midst of a struggle, God is at work in your life. In the midst of your challenges in life, God is working behind the scenes. Why? Because God is faithful. And, and uh, in those times that that's happened in, in my life and in, in the lives of others, we look back and we say, my gosh, why did I doubt? Why did I doubt God's faithfulness? And why did I doubt uh, the goodness of God? God was actually it, it was doing something greater. Amen. I'm going to say that again. God was doing something greater in the midst of the, your struggle. Amen. And so in the times that we live in, they may be challenging. They may be even confusing at times, but God, but we can find joy. We can find the peace of God. Why? Because God is a faithful God. He will not, His faithfulness will not be broken by our struggles. God is a loving God. We serve a God of love that He cares for you and I, that He will show His goodness and His kindness. His loving kindness is better than life. That's, this, that's what we sing in the Word of God says. His loving kindness is greater than life. Amen. And so, in the midst of all the things that we face in life, we can worship God and we can, and we can, uh, be, we can say, God is faithful to us. Nothing in this world can cancel the faithfulness of God. Amen. There's nothing in this world that can cancel the faithfulness of God. So let me speak into your life tonight. In the midst of your struggle, God is preparing a greater work, a greater uh, blessing for you up ahead listen to me very carefully because you you and i serve a faithful god in the midst of your challenge god is at work preparing something greater for you a greater blessing you may not see it right now and that's what gives us peace and that's what gives us joy that we can realize and know that God, He is faithful to us. That God is faithful. Even when our faith is weakened, He's still faithful. Even when we doubt, He's still faithful. Um, so how do we do that? See, man? So one thing I, I believe that is so important is that in the midst of any struggle in life, we learn to trust in God. Just trust in the Lord. Trust that He is in control 
and that all things are going to be good for to them that love God. That's what the Word of God says, that all things will come out for the good. And so this evening, we can rejoice and we can have peace in the midst of whatever is taking place in this world. We know we're living in a time never seen before in, in many, many years. I know there's been a lot of challenges in this world, uh, but in our lifetime, this is one of the greatest challenges that this world has seen. Death, economic uh, uh, struggles, uh, confusion, depression, oppression, all those things. And God is speaking very loud today. God is saying, I love you. God is saying, I am faithful to you. Regardless of what's taking place, and we can rejoice. In the midst of our challenges, we can rejoice. Third of all, that very important, is that we need to give praise unto the Lord. The book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 3. The Bible says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. So, uh, as I read our scripture, our text in the beginning, the Bible says that there was, the angels were giving praise unto the Lord and giving this message to these uh, shepherds and they were giving praise unto God. In the midst of trouble, in the midst of conflict, in the midst of, uh, of challenges and sickness and, and economic challenges, whatever it may be, uh, it is important that we worship God and we give Him praise. Why? Because the Bible says He is worthy to be praised not only in the days we have plenty, but also in the days of lacking. God is worthy of praise, not only in the days of when we're healthy, but also in those days when we find ourselves sick. God uh, releases, let me say this, God releases His power in the midst of praise. In the midst of praise, God releases His power unto His people. How does it work? I don't know how that works. I just don't know. I have learned. I have learned that when you and I worship God, when I have learned that when you and I praise God, there's, there's a power that takes place. And we see that in many instances in Scripture, when people worship God, there was, there was power that was released. When there was praise unto the Lord. And the Bible tells us here that the angels were praising God as they were giving this message of peace. And then in the, so it shows you and I that in the midst of conflict, in the mix, in the midst of all that's taking turmoil, that if we worship God and we praise God at all times, there is a power that takes place in our lives. That you can find, uh, uh, you can find praise unto God in the midst of struggles. Uh, just uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I, I was finding myself a little sick in my body. I went and took a, a, a COVID test, coronavirus test, to see if I had coronavirus. I, we, I waited for two or three days to find the results. And lo and behold, I got my results a few days later, and it was positive. It did uh, bring a little bit of, of a scare. Uh, it scared me a little bit. And... Um, so I had to, for the next few days, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and as you can tell, it's a little lingering a little bit. Um, uh, you know, I had to go through a little bit of sickness. It wasn't, uh, I thank God it wasn't a lot. But in the midst of that, I, I found myself saying, God, thank you, Lord. 
thank you. And you may even say, how can you thank God for having COVID? I wasn't thanking God for having COVID, but I was thanking God that even though I had, I was found myself positive that I was not being as challenged as other people's lives. As I wasn't thanking God for the positive results, but I was thanking God that even though I found myself with the sickness, I was not faced with sicknesses that these other people have been struggling with. Uh, there's been people with COVID that uh, they can't breathe, they're in ICU. Man, I didn't even have to really go to the hospital or the doctor. And so I said, God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that even though I got this sickness, I'm okay. And I thank God for that. And, uh, and, and there's times in your life that you may have a difficult situation and you may say to God, thank you, Lord, I praise you that even though I'm facing this, uh, uh, Lord, you still have been good to me and you've been merciful to me. And there's some th sometimes in our lives that you're going to find yourself in a situation in your life. You might even find yourself without a job or something. And you can say, God, thank you that even though I don't have a job right now, I know that you're taking care of me. And so there's, that we can always find something to praise God about. There's, we can always find something we can give God thanks and this is exactly what the Word of God is saying here. That we need to worship the Lord and we need to give Him praise at all times. Not only when, it's, when things are going good and the car's doing good and there's money in our pockets and everything's good. And yes, praise God for those days and we need to worship the Lord in those times. But we need to give God thanks in all times. And maybe you may be facing even a difficult situation. Maybe it's not a sickness. Maybe it's not uh, a financial. Maybe it's a, a relationship, a family issue. And you can go before God and tell the Lord, God, thank you, Lord, that you're doing something in my life right now through this situation. Thank you that you're using this situation that's hurting me. That you can go to God and say, God, even in the situation that it may be hurting my heart, God, but you're using it for the good in my life. It's drawing me closer to you. So this, this evening, I'm here to, to declare to you that we have peace on earth. We have the joy of God despite of what's taking place around us. Despite of confusion, sickness, financial challenges, whatever the case may be. That there, we, you and I can find the peace of God and the joy of God. Why? Because we serve a loving God. That He is good to us at all times. Why? How can we find His love? Because He's so faithful to us. How can we find the love of God? Because He is worthy of our honor and all worship and all praise. And so this evening, um, you can find peace and joy and love during these times. Why? Because we serve a very loving, faithful, and worthy God. We're going to go ahead and pray right now and ask God uh, to help us. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. We ask, my God, that you would bless us and that you would help us. God, thank you for the peace that you give us and the, your, and the joy that you give us. We don't understand it. We know that it comes from you. Thank you, Lord. Right now, my God, we pray for anybody at home watching that, man, Lord, that your peace would just fill them, God. That your joy would fill them in the name of Jesus. And for those at home, 
if you don't know Christ as your Savior, uh, I want to make an invitation for you. Uh, if you don't know the joy of God, the peace of God, the love of God, um, God wants to give you His peace and God wants to give you His joy. If you want to accept Christ and you have not accepted Him yet, I want you to please um, uh, find a place to pray in your home uh, as you're sitting, kneeling, standing, wherever you're at. And uh, if you want to, re want to receive Christ, I, I want you to please uh, say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I confess that I am a sinner and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I invite you to come into my heart and I declare you my God and my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the Bible says that if you, re if you, be if you um, said that prayer and you believed in your heart that you shall be saved. Amen. And so we encourage you to Please uh, um, stay close to God through a personal relationship with God. And, you know, God's going to help you. And for the rest of us, remember Sunday we have our service at 11. And also remember that we do have our offering. And I want to pick up our offering right now. And I want to encourage you to let, continue to be faithful unto, unto the Lord. Go to our website. Uh, or um, uh, We have our, the name of our church now is Legacy Church known as New Harvest uh, Church. You can go to either, uh, either uh, uh, website and you will find us there. If you want to look us up on Legacy Church, it will be LegacyChurch.biz, Legacy B-I-Z. And if you, if you go to New Harvest, it will lead you back to Legacy Church. But you can give there online. Let's continue to be faithful to God in our giving, in our tithe, in our offering unto the Lord. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday.